Hello my soccer universe. Let's try to make sense of this rather nonsensical game in a way. I'm wearing Barca and honestly I I wear it only because Barca won. Yes, ahead of the game I said I would like Barca to make it to the final, but I feel with every Liverpool fan tonight um, this must hurt. This must really hurt. Um, during the game I again made lots of notes. I mean it's two pages full of notes. Uh, writing down my thoughts and I was not wearing any soccer jersey. I again was wearing a hockey jersey. This time the other team, the Sharks, from the conference semi-final matchup. I'm testing my hockey powers. I've been wearing on Sunday the Sharks jersey, the Avalanche one. Yesterday I was wearing most of the time the Avalanche jersey and the Sharks one. So I have negative powers that we gotta figure out. And that's why I don't want to mess with anywhere here in soccer, uh, soccer world. Again, putting up the almost right jersey matchup. Um, I won't be able to do this for the return leg. But in that case, it doesn't matter that much because, you know, a big win for Barca. But it didn't feel all that way. Let's take it from the top. Um, Bjorn Kuipers was the referee and I have to say um, I generally like if, if a referee lets the game flow a little bit but maybe he's a little bit too uh, lax in his refereeing. I think he could have stepped in a little bit sooner. I mean he allows quite a physical game. He allows uh, he is not easily wooed by uh, challenges. Barca was um, seemingly almost constantly, but you know they didn't get that often to the penalty box. Um, but they were arguing for penalties all along. So uh, that was kind of the one of the main themes, especially in the first half. Firmino on the bench. And Vanaldum is playing for um, Firmino, which was kind of um, at the beginning no one really knew. A club came up with a, a really weird um, lineup. I mean, there was also no Alexander Arnold. Gomez was playing uh, for him, and you were wondering what type of system will he playing? Will it be the four-three-three that we know? Will it be five on the back? Will it be a four-four-two? with kind of an album as uh, number 10, uh, since he's more a midfield player than a striker. But in the end, he was playing a central striker. Uh, the other thing that I saw before people got, uh, before the players got in, quite some connections there. I mean, you saw Sillison hugging the ref, fellow Dutchman. Um, you saw Rakitic and Matip, who uh, both played for Schalke, sharing a moment together. Of course, Coutinho played for for Liverpool as did Suarez, so there was kind of some exchange. But it was more Coutinho than uh, Suarez. Um, I know Suarez keeps, they said, keeps uh, in contact with Henderson, but other than that, I didn't feel that he knows many players from there. So yeah, uh, also Barca played in a 4-3-3. That probably morphed a little bit in the 4-4-2 because um, um, uh, when they are on the defensive side so kind of a little bit shift up it was the oldest Champions League lineup uh, for Barca that uh, I thought it was in interesting and I actually thought this might be against Barca in a little bit because you know Old and routine uh, can work well. We saw it for Juventus for a long time, but this year it was not working for so, uh, Juventus. And a game, great choreography by the Barca fans, gotta say that. Uh, Camp Nou was uh, definitely buzzing. Uh, you knew uh, that this was a big game. I also like that uh, there was quite a size of a Liverpool sector all the way on top, but um, there I have not seen how it was for United. I guess it was similar for them. But yeah, uh, it was not too many, of course, but it was very, very long. It was just the upper upper edge and all the highest, highest edge. So keep them uh, oh, far as far away as possible, which kind of messed up the choreography a little bit. Gotta say, uh, I would have put them somewhere on the side. I always thought that uh, it's next to, if you watch on the TV, 
uh, the away sector is to the right, basically next to the scoreboard. Um, now to put them all the way high up, whatever. Um, the game started, you know, at first I feel out, I thought that uh, at one point Barcelona is trying to launch a quick attack, then it was Liverpool launching a uh, quick attack, um, but Liverpool quickly got a grip of the game. I have here a second minute, risky clearance from uh, Langley against um, Salah in the third minute, Messi has his first uh, dribble um, and uh, a, a good chance for Rakitic, which was blocked by Matip. So it was a little bit exchanging of uh, blows in, in in a way. Then Mane causes uh, some confusion in the box where possible penalty, not really in the end. I mean, there was no review whatsoever, but Piquet at that moment seemed a little bit shaky. That's what I want. More possession for Liverpool and Barca was defending quite deep. I remember a few times that even uh, Ter Stegen had to play the ball just that much away from his own goal line. It was really, really, really shaky. And as I said, the referee uh, had it quite loose. Liverpool dictated the pace and Barca could not really find the footing. Uh, Liverpool made it really uncomfortable for Barca. Not something that Barca encounters a lot. But then... 13th minute, again uh, Messi has a little dribble, dribble in the box, the ball comes out, it hits Matip, who actually kind of seems to shove the ball a little bit with his hand, um, was not given, was not even really reviewed, uh, the referee said, uh, go on, yes, it was not an intentional hand play, but you could really see once the ball touches the hand, he moves it. I could have under understood if this would have been a penalty, and I think I've seen penalties given in Spain and in Italy for this kind of offense uh, then again and it's kind of funny because there was really more liverpool but uh, the problem with liverpool is that um despite me saying at the beginning the bar is shaky they actually stood quite well on the back they had the defense uh quite well organized and it was a lot reminding me of the um, uh, ajax u the first game where Ajax could play whatever they liked right up until the box. And there, the goalkeeper didn't have to do much. The defenders were standing very, very, very well. And you, Liverpool never could get into position. As much as they dominated possession, they never could get into position. And never developed this, um, you know, direct path towards the goal. It was always a little bit more... Let's have another pass. Let's try this. Let's tr make nice passing moves. Let's weave it more than be one two passes. The what Barcelona uh, often did. Um, Messi then again has a dribble that he puts out to uh, Coutinho, who and um, ball falls to Coutinho. I think there was that Messi dribble on the box. It was clear. It comes to Coutinho. And he has a shot on goal, and then an. <laughs> You should see my notes here, 16th minute again. Messi, he made himself known. Messi, do you see these lines here? This is, yeah, he was dribbling himself through the box. <laughs> Coutinho again gets, uh, gets to the ball, it's offside. Uh, he would have shot it wide. Uh, and then, in the 18th already, uh, if a situation for Barca, because there was a freaky game, the APK, of course, wow, he never touched anyone. Um, it was kind of on the box edge of the box very close to the touchline uh, for Liverpool it was put in it could have been the end the dangerous but in the end it was not really it got cleared um, and then a big thing happened in the 20th minute Keita had an injury he seemingly pulled something on the inside uh, hamstring immediately Henderson is war warming up and Liverpool had to play for I mean they took care of him for about two minutes and then Liverpool had to play a man down for another minute or two and while Barca tried to take advantage immediately it was actually twice Mané that could not really connect he was there he got into position somehow but could not really get through and the last pass was kind of, kind of missing and then Henderson comes around for Keita and at that moment it was similar to the Ajax uh, game yesterday 
there was a little bit of break in, uh, in Liverpool. Uh, things got a lot more even at that point. Uh, I said at this point, I wrote, I made a note, Liverpool presses uh, well and high and also compresses when they got back they really compressed the uh, the midfield very very well they had a very thin midfield so you always had kind of uh, the Barca attackers offside uh, and they also frequently intercepted quite dangerous passes I mean if Barcelona had the ball they immediately went for the kill um, and Liverpool could intercept as well not too long 26th minute uh, the ball comes to over the left I think uh, Coutinho who plays it uh, through to Alba who plays a precision pass into the run of Suarez who basically jumps into the ball and just chips it over Alisson into the net 1-0 and that's it absolutely against the run of the play but it was a super timed pass uh, by uh, Alba and it was uh, Suarez's first Champions League goal. I also wrote down up until that point Messi really looked sharp. I mean many many dribbles whenever he had the ball he tried to go uh, to bind as many players as possible to put others in, in position but we'll come to that later. Uh, 32nd really nice combination of bars in the box between I think it was Alba and Coutinho um, just didn't go nowhere but there it could have been already 2-0 uh, and at that point it was already 4-4 in chances but two shots on goal by Barcelona the one that we had uh, at the beginning and that was uh, the second one was of course the goal um, there was also a really nice wide pass from Henderson almost perfectly over the Barca defense and this was a run that Manet could take but he just couldn't get to the ball uh, he got the shot off but if he's in slightly better position, he could slot this home and it's 1-1 and we're talking about a completely different ball game here. Um, actually, this was one of my key uh, moments in the first half. Barca makes the goal out of seemingly nowhere and Liverpool, when they have their chance, they cannot connect. And this was going to come back to bite them. I mean, we have a saying in German, the goals you don't make, you end up giving up. And that, I think, perfectly sums up this game. Uh, another one. Salah is blocked and Milner uh, takes the block pass, but it's a long shot that goes wide. Milner, it's, uh, it's the tragic figure of this game. Uh, as I said, they have more initiative, but cannot get in positions. Then we get the first yellow card for Langley. He pulls the shirt of Salah. Very well deserved. This was coming... For, for, for a while uh, and then I have written uh, where is Messi I said Messi looks sharp um, right after the goal but then every action almost didn't involve Messi there was um, there was an attack attacking move and I didn't see Messi I mean he was not participating in in there was this one of those where he just sees looks sees where Where's everyone going? Takes himself out. He frequently does this and then he bites. Uh, Milner actually was then uh, not booked, but he kind of checked Messi, um, which is exactly what you don't want to have to get Messi angry. But at that point, the game was a lot more balanced already. Um, and in the injury team at the time, uh, Barca wanted to have another penalty. My summary of the first half, Loretta's low. Liverpool starts very strong, dictates the game. The injury to Keita is kind of a slight break into the game flow. Barca gets the goal and then claws itself back into the game. I mean, Barca managed to get this uh, game on level terms. Uh, at, the, at the end, was quite balanced. Klopp, surprised with the lineup, but he had the right plan. I think he really put Barca on the back foot, but uh, the injury the, did him in. Messi dribbled a lot, but the danger was more of Alba and Coutinho, and it was quite intense. And uh, Barca played actually with quite some energy. Liverpool dominated, but Barca went, went forward. It was kind of this ferociousness. Stats, shots 5-6 in favor of Liverpool, but 2-0 on goal. Uh, one corner each and possession was slightly favor of Barca. That was to change. 
Second half, Liverpool completely dominated for the first 20 minutes. Barca could not get a grip of the game. Uh, but same story. 47th chance, Milner, that uh, Ter Stegen saves. Um, that I can understand. Uh, he got the ball, got to him. He takes the shot. But you know, if he could get a little bit more punch in there, Ter Stegen has a little bit more problem. Then, in the 53rd, uh, really a nice passing move. I, say, I wrote here, passing move a la Ajax. Then Salah takes a shot uh, from outside out of box. That would have gone in. Uh, Ter Stegen can um, save. Again, Liverpool starts in the first half. Lots of high press, but Barca um, often had the, the ability to counter, the possibility to counter, but it was a little bit uh, not very well connected. 59th minute, and this for me, now in hindsight, is the game turner. Milner has a great chance. He gets the ball uh, again. Wonderful flowing passing move by, uh, by, by Liverpool. Pass goes uh, along the box. Milner is running, gets a shot off, and it's right at Testing. Testing didn't have, have a problem. This is a chance that you have to take. Same similar one to the Manet one, but this one really wide open net. You gotta put it in the corner. Don't put it right at the goalkeeper. And that's why Milner is a tragic figure. Uh, I also noted, uh, yeah, then in the, I said, then uh, there was kind of the change. Coutinho came off, Semedo came on, probably to st stabilize the defense because Liverpool still don't dominate. I lost my line here. Then um, 63rd, this was kind of foreboding. A genius pass for Messi onto Vidal, who is absolutely free, and he decides to pass it to Suarez instead of taking a shot. Messi was really furious at this. And I also noted uh, Vidal that he had a torn shirt right here, as did uh, have Langley in the first half. Then uh, a bad back pass from Mati Pep that Alisson kind of got the ball ahead of Messi, but that could have been. Uh, dangerous at that point i was really wondering is barca back in the game maybe 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 may, may not uh and then liverpool again is back at it again but still having trouble to get position and at that moment i was thinking you know the last time barcelona was at this stage and having the first leg at home this was against bayern and there messi then destroyed uh famously uh boateng but that was a different performance. It was even what Barca could assert themselves in the end. I didn't see this happening there. And then it happened. 75th minute. Messi plays a ball. Sergio Roberto gets a touch that uh, Suarez kind of has to improvise to shoot it on the bar. Ball falls to Messi, stops it, runs into goal. 2 0 Barcelona. Absolutely out of nowhere. Absolutely out of nowhere. And I wrote here, Barca is playing in Italian fashion. Super, super, super efficient. This 2-0 was not in the cards at this moment. It was more a question, is Liverpool going to get the goal or is Barca kind of saving themselves with a 1-0 victory, narrow 1-0 victory. They get a 2-0. And at that point, Liverpool is really on the back foot. Um, Messi then almost scored again couldn't get it and I wrote then this has to suck for Liverpool for sure because uh, that goal is another game changer. Barca suddenly was super aggressive and Liverpool was deflated. Um, Klopp tried his best, got on Firmino for Wijnaldum, then uh, Fabiano gets a yellow card because he blocked Messi kind of 30 meters out or so, or so on. And I'm writing here, would he actually take a free kick from here? Suarez gets a yellow card for complaining, and then Messi takes a free kick. And I write, Messi, free kick, godlike. Takes a free kick, it goes around the wall, right, right, right net. You cannot shoot this any better. Uh, and the, 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 the picture after the goal is, you stay put to club and he's just smiling. And you know this is from pain, but also what have I just witnessed here? 
this was not only was this a great goal, it was Messi's 600th goal in 683 games, and I mean the goal in competitive games. Uh, this season, 48 goals now, with this one, 8 free kicks. No one, even ha no one else has, I think, even 3. Absolutely amazing and absolutely so against the run of play. This reminded me so much about uh, in the 90s or whatever, many last games that were there well in the game, they just cannot connect and then the opposition grinds you down. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, could have been better for Liverpool though. In the 84th minute, Salah, free open net, he hits the post. He needs to bury that goal and this is why Liverpool ultimately will not advance to the Champions League final. Uh, you have to give your chances. You had at least three chances. One of these have, uh, you have to make. Barcelona at that point had... Um, I don't count the free kick. They had two, three chances and they made three goals out of those. Count the free kick back in. Um, absolutely. The absolute sitter. And at that moment, Barca was completely disordered in defense, which was not uh, frequently happening. Barca was super, super effective, really almost Italian-like. Uh, it sounds mind-boggling to me to say this, but Barca was a better version of Juventus. Sitting deep being able to, but having all the offensive firepower in front. The thing that Liverpool did not have. And uh, Orishi then came on for Milner. In 86 there is a, a yellow card for uh, Sergio Roberto and then they put in the stats for shots. 6-4 shots for Liverpool in the first half, 7-5 in the second and 39 total. And Barca has three goals. Uh, Almost a great chance for Bas in the 88th, uh, and it was only can Liverpool get the away goal because the away goal would change the complexion of the game. Then you only need a 2 0 at Anfield, which seems doable. Now, a 3 0 down, this is almost mission impossible. But no, uh, there was only one chance where Tessing missed the ball and then Henderson got the head, head but misses the goal as well. Um, then there was a sensational tackle from Vidal in the box, uh, gets the ball from Manet, who wants a penalty, there was no penalty. And then two, three on one go, uh, counters by Barca that could have made it four, which would have been way too much, on, on, honestly. Uh, the first one came in a nine, nine a second, where Messi has the ball, Suarez left, Alba right, and Alba cannot uh, continue. Um, and Suarez shot is blocked, then Suarez comes off, Sergio Roberto comes off, uh, then Bele and Alenio come on, and then Bele man manages to miss two chances, the last of which was really the last uh, action of the game. 3 and 1, if not 3 0. Uh, Messi a ball, Messi gives him to Dembele, Dembele cannot put it in. The score. And I stand by the score does not reflect the way the game went. Um, but it's down to Liverpool not taking their chances. Liverpool put Barca in a lot of pain. Lots of pain. First half and especially for 20-25 minutes in the second half. Uh, Barca could not get a grip on this game. Liverpool completely dominated Barca at that point. Um, Barca is super, was super efficient today. Overall statistics, 15 to 12 shots in favor of Liverpool. On goal, 5-5, five, five, so that was even, but Barca makes three goals out of these. Uh, corners, 5-3 for Liverpool. Uh, then possession was 48, Barca 52 li for Liverpool. And then the kind of tackles and, 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 and so on, or challenges for, for the ball. Uh, Barca won 54% as 46% Liverpool and I think this is one of the key statistics, that's the one that Barca dominated. Barca was defensively sound and my mind still says when I say these words does not compute but yes Barca is a different animal and I told you Barca is maybe playing the least attractive football of all the teams that are left at this stage. What a game it was. But I'm afraid this basic kill, kill kills of the tie next Tuesday. I don't see uh, Liverpool coming coming back from that one. That needs to be a magic magic night. 
I actually see that uh, Barca will get a goal and that then takes care of that. So yeah, Liverpool got a little bit of their own medicine. This is basically how it was Porto against Liverpool in many regards. Now they get a taste of their own medicine. Um, if I'm a Liverpool fan, of course I feel proud of my boys. They did well overall. But you got to take your chances. you got to be more direct tour towards goal. You have a great team. But you met your master today, in a way. And the master is about 175 short and scores free kicks out of nowhere. That was really impressive. So yeah, I actually really feel with Liverpool fans. I told you before I am favoring Barca slightly more, um, but the way the game, game went, I feel with every Liverpool fan. It was even closest that I was wearing a Liverpool shirt now, but then I decided, okay, I always wear the shirt of the team that won. So there you go, Barca. Yeah, I would like to hear what Klopp will say after that one, but uh, you had the tactics spot on, at least at the, at the beginning and then <laughs> strange, 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 strange game. It uh, almost beggars belief. Well, let me know what you thought about this game. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and my take on this game. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.